On agriculture, President Barrow continues to promote his government's policy uh, to transform the sector from rudimentary to mechanized farming to make agribusiness a key economic player. To realize this policy goal, the government is ensuring that farmers access input and farm implements uh, is given priority for the 2019 rainy season. The Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with National Food, uh, Process, Food Security Processing and Marketing Corporation, is procuring a total of 7,500 metric tons of flour, uh, fertilizer for the rainy season this year. Also, with support from Japan, an extra 600 tons of fertilizer and 30 tons of assorted seeds will be available to farmers this year. Cooperative groups, farmer associations, and cluster communities in 11 districts from the Upper River Region, Central River Region, North Bank, and the Lower River Regions will benefit from 260 agricultural equipments, ranging from rice and coarse grain treasures, milling machines, power tillers, accessories, pumping machines, and 5 foot 20 container freezers. These will be provided through the Ministry of Agriculture as part of the Japanese support along with the Agri Agriculture Value Chain Development Project and the National La Agricultural Land Management and Development Project, NEMA. To encourage and empower farmers, to have their own seeds, the Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with FAO through European Union funding, will procure certified seeds from Gambian seed growers. Locally, 56% of groundnut seed, 71% of maize seed, and 100% of Findi seed needed are available this year locally. In addition, over 11,000 households identified in the Upper River Region, Central River North and South, Lower River and the North Bank will be given FAO procured seed and fertilizer. Out of this, 25% of the households are female-headed and 75% male-headed who are in need of input support for 2019-2020 rainy season. In another development, the President has been briefed on discussions between the Gambia government and, the, and Egypt to create jobs for the youth through agriculture. 3,000 hectares of land has been identified for rice cultivation and poultry farming in the Nyanija district of the Central River region north. This followed President Barrow's visit to Egypt last December. Finance and economy. An economic council under the office of the president has been set up to provide regular updates to the president on macroeconomic situation of the country. It has been noted that while the economic outlook is promising, the prices of basic commodities continues to be affected by world prices. Meanwhile, the deputy head of the IMF, Mr. Zhang, in a meeting with the president, appreciated the Gambia's uh, performance in the last two years while encouraging the country to continue on the way it has started to maintain good performance in the economic and social sectors, creating stability and boosting business to achieve prosperity. He also commended the Gambia for the Senegambia bridge and signing of the Africa Continental Free Trade Zone Agreement in connecting and promoting regional integration. He gave assurance of coordination of international assistance to support the country's uh, reform programs. On human rights, UNOWAS representative Dr. Ibn, Mohammed Ibn Chambers expressed his pleasure with the progress of work in the commissions and hailed the Gambians serving the, in the various commissions, including the TRRC, the CRC, and the National Human Rights Commissions. He was impressed with the government, that the government made funds available to the CRC 
to conduct outside consultations with Gambians to strengthen the institutions as part of the electoral reforms. President Barrow, in his response, said the reform programs are meant to be modernized and sustainable in an atmosphere that is conducive for the participation of all citizens. Security sector. President Barrow has assigned the Ministry of Justice to coordinate the activities of the National Security Steering Committee. Meanwhile, a national security sector policy has been prepared and is due, for, due to be launched in June this year, that is next month. Also, the head of state has also directed the, for the upgrading of the military barracks in the country. On land administration, a task force comprising representatives from the governor's office in the West Coast region, the ministries of interior, justice and lands, has reported calm in the land dispute between Gunjur and Berending. On the civil service reform, the office of the president led a retreat with heads of subvented institutions to create better delivery of services. Policy issues to improve impact and functional institutions were discussed to avoid duplication and minimize wastage. Energy and Petroleum British Petroleum BP signed an offshore petroleum license. The President has been informed that BP will be provided with exclusive right to drill and explore prospects in offshore block A1. On governance, in an interface, to, uh, in an interface between the Cabinet led by President Barrow and the Constitutional Review Commission, in addition to that, a written contribution will be submitted to the CRC for consideration from the executive. Also, the Department of Strategic Policy Delivery at the Office of the President presented to Cabinet its strategy to collaborate, coordinate, and unblock blockages in the delivery of services on the presidential priorities of the NDP. The Department will also support the Presidency on evidence-based decision-making using data and facts. On health, the President has been briefed about the ongoing consultations with Qatari Charity Foundation to support the government build a hospital in the Greater Banjul area in line with making professional health care services accessible to the people. On upcoming engagements of the President, President Barrow will attend the 14th session of the OIC summit scheduled for the 30th, to the 1st of, 30th May to the 1st of June in Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, the Gambia has deferred the hosting of the OIC summit from 2019 to 2022 after a series of high-level consultations with other African countries <coughs> to allow it more time to prepare for a successful hosting. The preparations include the construction of needed infrastructure for the summit. Thank you. I now take your questions. Please identify your name and the media you represent here. Um, the process is on, and uh, the date and time has not been fixed yet, but the <coughs> process, is, they are working towards that. I'm aware of that process going on, and uh, the ministries involved are also doing their part to ensure that um, everything is set on course. Okay, so Thank you. Final question is then, land disputes abound in many parts of the country. Uh, we also have caste disputes. Hmm? Uh, in the URR. What? CAST. C A S T E. This yes, 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 yes. Okay. This yes. Mm -hmm. In the URR, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, sometimes acute, mm -hmm. uh, what has been done or what plans does government have to resolve these disputes to avoid escalation, mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. death, mm -hmm. and communal strife? Okay. Um, on the issue of um, CAST, the CAST system, as we all know, it's a traditional practice more than anything. And uh, the, I know that the president has been involved in the discussions that he has been briefed on 
to advise the communities, especially using our traditional means of communication, to reach out to the way we do um, uh, problem solving by resolving to communal discussions and uh, the, uh, using the elders of the communities to settle the disputes between the communities. So far, I know that has been going on, and the president has been informed about the efforts being done, especially in the URR, where these issues are taking place uh, to be able to resolve these problems through communal approaches to uh, problem solving, especially uh, resolutions of conflicts related to tradition and culture. Can you identify your name? I am Kira <coughs> Mabre from Korea newspaper. Uh, I have three questions, one of which is a pregnant one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the first one is um, last year, mm -hmm. uh, farmers were sold fertilizer mm -hmm. at the reduced price of $700 mm -hmm. per bag. Uh, but they have complained of the following. Uh, when uh, the fertilizer was not available on time, two, cost of transportation resulted to additional cost of $100 to $200. See, many farmers cannot still afford the price of $700. Um, has any measures been put in place to address these issues? That's my question. Okay. On that, uh as you said, pregnant question. Um, the information on agriculture that is available this year is what I have provided to you. That is, um, they're trying to get 7,500 metric tons of fertilizer for the farmers. Secondly, the Japan has supported an extra 600 tons and 30 tons of fertilizer plus 30 tons of assorted, assorted seeds. So it means that efforts are being made to make fertilizer available as much as possible. Um, regarding the details of the other costs in, involved, I think that will be for the technical uh, ministry to go into details of those things. Thank you. The conference was going to be um, postponed. Okay. And uh, because the last time we were here for the state house media briefing, you told us that the project was pretty much effective mm -hmm. and it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we would like to know um, what led to the um, conference being postponed. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens to the project now mm -hmm. that it is taken to another country? Yes. And in fact, what is the assurance that the OIC will be hosted in the Gambia mm -hmm. come 2021? Okay. Um, another pregnant question. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the first point, at one point, after the, this, uh, the last press briefing we had, you will notice it's about a month now. Um, after that, um, a high-level delegation was sent out to do consultation. And uh, uh, they returned last week, towards the end of the weekend, and it was finally that's the information we got, and that's when we got it officially that uh, the uh, consensus has been reached among the African countries that the Gambia will uh, uh, host it in 2022, and that is when the government decided to defer it. On uh, what happens to the um, project, the project actually continues. In fact, um, uh, the agreement has been uh, reached that the funds are available already for the projects to continue with not only the airport to VIP lounge, but also the roads that need to connect from the airport to the conference area. Also, the uh, hotel will be built specifically um, to accommodate all the delegates as much as possible for the um, next uh, summit. But also, it has been uh, supported to provide electricity and water for the areas around the um, specific project, that is a specific project for the hotel area and also around the conference area. And you realize that um, the construction of the conference center has advanced and it is also going on. So nothing will stop. In fact, it will give more time for the preparations to be done in an appropriate way to ensure that there is successful hosting of the uh, summit. Um, 
I think I saw her hand up. Yeah, it's still on? Yes. Okay. Uh, good, morning. good morning. My name is Nadia Chang from Star TV. Okay. Well, you've mentioned of the mechanical system of farming that the government is trying to change the farming system of the land. So uh, what measures does the government take for now to change the mechanical farming system? Um, you just mentioned this. Okay. Actually, I think you, if you listen carefully, you will realize that I have mentioned that over 260 different farming um, implements are available for farmers this year, gearing towards achieving that goal of mechanization. So that those farm implements, whether they are um, treasures, whether rice or coarse grain, whether they are milling machines are all part of the process of mechanizing <coughs> to ensure that what the farmers are doing can be improved and enhanced through mechanization. Yes, sir. The president is reviewing the report in conjunction with the technical people that are involved to ensure that the uh, report is compre uh, the, the recommendations of the reports are known and understood and whatever decision they have come out with they will share it with everybody it will be public information of the decision that is going to be taken um, uh, just, mm -hmm. um, reports are uh, members of the coalition have met and made uh, recommendations mm -hmm. uh, some recommendations with regard to signing the MOU, um, what is the president's position uh, on the MOU? Um, as far as I know, and uh, uh, I think this has been discussed in the media before, the president acknowledges that there was an MOU uh, that was not signed, but it was campaigned under the uh, issue of three years. But apart from the period of the governance, it has indicated a lot of other areas of governance relating to the commissions we are talking about right now, if you, under, if you are following what is going on, um, to make sure that there is institutional reforms, security sector reforms, all these are part of what the MOU wanted, the spirit, is to ensure that in the governance of the transition period, we have um, institutions, reform, institutional reforms. We have the issues of the, um, the uh, commissions that will make sure that we have accountable and transparent institutions, as well as reforming the security sector. And this is why you have all these commissions coming up to ensure that the desire for the people will be maintained. And this is the position of the, uh, the president, to ensure that what we have aimed for, for the change to take place, let us work hard to achieve it. Uh, my final question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, why is the government, do we know why is the government, why is the government not ruining um, contracts of some ambassadors uh, like Kevin and John? Without going into any specific thing, if you say the government, I will refer you to the Ministry of, Just, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They are the technical arm who are directly engaged in the uh, contracts of the ambassadors uh, in, uh, in the different countries. Without going to any specific um, um, individual, I will know that, uh, what I know that, uh, is that the president, when they are appointing the ambassadors, they had a time frame attached to them. And their contracts had time. That much I know. But why and how they process it, you have to go to the technical ministry to answer those questions. From your personal experience, why do you think this is the case? I'm not here to give my personal experience. I'm here to share with you what the president knows and what he has to say on issues. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Levin Paul from Paradise TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first question is, uh, is it true that the government of the Gambia struck a deal with Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. to host the coming OIC? Will they turn for them to prove the half of the pledge they made to the Gambia? That's one. The second question is, uh, during the visit of the CRC to the presidency, they emphasized on land issues becoming common in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. What are some of the set rules the presidency has in place to tackle issues like that? Okay. And my third question is regarding the anti-government protesters who, you know, took to the streets to protest against the rule of the current president. What is the president's reaction towards this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the CRC, 
in the contributions, as I said, apart from having the face-to-face -face discussions, the written um, recommendations from the executive will be presented to the CRC. So um, generally the discussion was to have a frank discussion, uh, open, where the issues of governance from the executive's perspective will be discussed with the, uh, has been discussed with the CRC. And uh, the issue of land and other forms of uh, issues regarding governance we are all discussed. And uh, they concluded that they will send a written um, opinion on what they think the executive's perspective is on the CRC to contribute to the constitutional review. So the issue of um, the anti, what do you call it? anti -baro. okay. Um, I'm not sure about any anti -baro I would call a protest that I have been aware of. So if there is anything called anti -baro, uh protest, I'm not aware of it. Thank you. There's another question about Saudi Arabia. This, the, the, whether there was a... If it's true, then the government will have um, I'm, I'm not aware of a deal uh, between Saudi Arabia and the government. What I am aware of is there was high level consultation going on between um, the government of the Gambia and other African countries because it was the turn of the African countries to host the OIC. That is why the Gambia was uh, supposed to host it. Uh, realizing that all the things that were needed are not yet in place, it was considered prudent to go back to the African bloc and discuss with them and see whether uh, for the, instead of the, another country taking another African country taking its turn to host the, con the summit, they will allow Gambia to host it. And this has not been the first time it is happening. It has happened before. Even Saudi Arabia, as the main host of the OIC, had deferred at one point for six years its right to host. Senegal did it, Egypt did it, Pakistan did it. So it's not something new or it's because you are negotiating or dealing, making a deal, that's why you are postponing or deferring. No, that's not the case. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nopla, I'm a long term as a president. It's almost three years down the line. Hmm. Uh, the transition process seems to be trapped with mountain challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, Did the government consider holding a national forum to address all this issue? Mm -hmm. um, the only question is, has to do with uh, maybe recently, you know, the British Petroleum uh, DB mm -hmm. officials they came here and uh, after they had meeting with the president, they uh, made it clear that uh, they have been granted three mm -hmm. rights mm -hmm. on Block A1. Mm -hmm. And there is a problem mm -hmm. because uh, this block, uh, you know that. I, uh, African Federal is still you know, claiming that they have exploration rights on block uh, A1 and A4. Mm -hmm. So is the government you know, uh, confident that uh, they are going to win that uh, independent arbitration? Uh, I'm not in a position to answer that. What I can say is that uh, the president has been informed that BP went through the due process and uh, they had all the legal advice that they needed to make sure that they license it out to BP. That I can tell you. The issue of the caste system, whether and the land disputes and all these things happening, um, I think in a new democracy, we could expect a lot of things happening. People are realizing their rights. And if you look at some of these things, these are linked with traditional practices and beliefs and uh, norms that were taking place in the society. But we are in an era of human rights and people understand their rights. So I think it is not something new for people to claim their rights. I think what is important is what is being done to make sure that our rights, the demand for our rights are measured in a right way where we will all uh, appreciate and recognize that we have rights and we enjoy those rights. And what the uh, president has been briefed upon regarding the caste system and this land dispute is to make sure that we do consultation, dialogue, to understand the genesis of the problems and how to address them. And I know that is something that has been done and it will continue to be done to ensure that um, we continue to claim these traditional issues, look at them from the perspective of modern day democracy in terms of rights and responsibilities and how we fit that within our cultural norms and values.
Yes. Thank you. My name is Donna Bayer from Bayer News Network. Um, Madam, I'd like to ask you concerning uh, the three years of mm -hmm. The journalist earlier framed it in the wrong way. There was no anti barrel protest, but instead, there is a civil based organization that has registered, and the aim and objective is to strengthen democracy. And as a result, they decided to stake a demonstration calling for the coalition leaders to respect the three years that they have agreed earlier, mm -hmm. although it was on site. Mm -hmm. So yesterday there was a, a, a press conference, something like meeting between them, and now they are calling government to drop the necessary charges against those that have been arrested. Mm -hmm. So what is the government stand, whether the government will adhere to that, or they will still continue to prosecute this? Um, I'm not aware of what government position is on the legal aspect of what you are talking about. Um, but I know that in terms of our democracy and talking about promoting democracy, our uh, rights should be within the rule of law. And that much I can see. But how, what the government will decide, that has not been discussed before this briefing, and I cannot give an opinion or the opposition of the president on it, because we have not discussed that. And there is a lady behind you. As far as I know, the Minister of Interior, Minister of Foreign Affairs, these are the um, institutions that are responsible for some of these things you are talking about, especially relating to our, um, our citizens in other countries. So I would um, advise you to contact the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Interior to give you uh, information on that. Um, right now, where I'm standing, I've not had any briefing or discussion on this matter, and I cannot give you an answer that will be honest to what I know. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam, I'd like to ask whether there will be any by uh, annual press conference with the President in and if so, when? Um, right now, it has not been planned. What we have been doing is to, uh, we're having individual interviews going on. And um, l last week, we had one from the uh, uh, international body that was uh, associated uh, to BBC. And uh, we also started an interview with the um, Paradise uh, Television. And uh, that interview actually is continuing um, today, uh, this week. So for, for now, we're looking at his, we look at his schedule and we try to um, uh, program uh, the request we have so far. So regarding um, the biannual in engagement, so far this is what we have been able to do. 
Yes. Sorry, I just yes, okay. Um, about the health sector, mm. there have been mass complaints about nurses and doctors' behavior lately. And probably because some people who have babies in hospitals, especially mm -hmm. at Sarah and the public health centers. Uh, what is the government doing about that? Because there, there have really been so many complaints about their behaviors. Okay. Um, it seems all your questions are now going into wider government engagements and issues that the wider government has to address. While I'm trying to limit myself to what the president has been briefed upon, um, I would suggest that um, you engage the wider government through the spokesperson to engage on some of these issues that you are discuss you are you are requesting to know. Um, my responsibility is focused on what the president has been briefed of and uh, what he has discussed with uh, officials regarding the sectors. So if he has not discussed issues with the sectors, I'm not in a position to be able to discuss that here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, can, okay. Sorry, well, uh, Madam, yeah. you talked about um, following the rule of law with hmm. regard to the um, protesters um, who, um, who, who gathered uh, the Kairawa um, hotels um, no, I did not say that. Can you? Can I correct what I said? You yes. asked me. I said, please let me correct what I have said. I was referring to demo that our rights and responsibility in a democracy. We, as much as we appreciate the need to have our rights and earn them, we need to also respect the rule of law. Okay. This is what I have That's said. No, no. Point. You are mentioning things, Senator Gambia, which I have not mentioned. No, I quoted you saying that mm -hmm. the rule of law mm -hmm. um, um, should be followed. Yes. The not only rights. not only to the people yes. uh, our rights as citizens if we are while we want to enjoy our rights we should also ensure that we follow it through the due process of the law by respecting the laws of the land that's what i have tried right. to say. Mm -hmm. now there are those who point out that um solo sending and others did the same when mm -hmm. they took to the street to mm -hmm. show opposition mm -hmm. uh, to some of the bad laws mm -hmm. the bad laws mm -hmm. um people People said that it is hypocritical of mm -hmm. this government to now turn back mm -hmm. and say, look, you people cannot do this. This is unlawful. This is um, in contravention of the public order act. What is the position of the government? Um, I will refer you to the, um, uh, the police, um, Gambia police force, so that they will tell you what the rules and regulations are regarding the right to protest. And then you will be able to have the technical information that is required there. My information right now, as I said, um, it seems we have exhausted the issues that are regarding the president directly that we are engaging in. On that note, I will just want to say thank you very much. There was a last person we wanted to offer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. In a few of your words, uh, mm. you said we are in a democracy right now, mm -hmm. and we could expect things to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, Gambia mm -hmm. is in a pretty much of a democracy, mm -hmm. and then, um, hence we could expect things to happen. So in counter, mm -hmm. couldn't we expect uh, solutions in mm -hmm. remedying these issues mm -hmm. before they happen? In fact, if you look at the whole governance, that is why you're having these commissions, to see and understand how our institutions have been operating to ensure that the citizens enjoy their rights within the limits of the rule of law. So um, a lot of things are going on because if you look at the rights of people who have been abused, are the issues that the commissions are bringing up. If you look at our constitutional rights issues, that is what the CRC is bringing up. Our human rights issues, that is why I have the National Human Rights Commission. All these commissions, including the existing traditional structures we have as institutions responsible for particular areas, are all part of the security sector reform and the civil service reform. Um, I may add that we also need to perceive and understand ourselves as Gambians. Well, how do we understand our, ourselves as citizens, our rights, our responsibilities, as well as how we move the country forward in making sure that in the generations that are coming, we have the best of what we call the Gambia. On that note, I thank you all for your time and for coming and for being part of this session. Thank you very much.